This is Elaine Betts. At three, she was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, and her parents were told that she wouldn't reach her seventh birthday. They didn't count on Elaine's strength and determination, or her parents, who taught her that nothing was impossible. Now, the challenge is not um, foreign to you. You've learned how to fly a plane, ran a marathon right after having your transplant. Well, you walked to Marathon. I'm on board. (laughs) (laughs) I'm on board the 10K in Manchester, yeah. So you've you've done those quad bike things. You're going up the side of mountains and through mud. Yes. So you you take a challenge head on. Yeah, I don't avoid challenging. I don't avoid conflict. I actually just go for it and live with the consequences afterwards. So, yeah, the quad biking and the flying the Tiger Moth aeroplane, it's all been really, really good. So when I was really ill, I... I convinced and influenced my employee to allow me to carry on working full time, take an oxygen bottle into work and do IVs at my desk. And people around me, I got them to understand what I needed to do it. So their fear factor of needles soon reduced within the first month of me being in there. So if people understand, they can accept what you're doing. But if they don't understand, they just are very fearful. At 36, Elaine was almost not given a double lung transplant because her health had deteriorated so much. But Elaine convinced them that she was a fighter, so they took a chance. That was four years ago. Um, it was mainly when I, I'm coming up to four years of my transplant, um, and I was having a lot of life thoughts about what I wanted to do with my life. And I went to the transplant team, and we had a discussion about life expectancy, and that kind of put me back more into the real world, put my feet back on the ground that yeah, I've only got so many years, I'm going to leave. It's not kind of like another 20, 30 years. And I thought, okay, what do I want to be doing that I'm not currently doing in my full-time job? And I felt there's a bit of a gap missing. So I thought, right, let's have a go at doing something that I've never ever thought of. And that was actually setting up my own business to do what I do now as a full-time job. So something I never, ever dreamt of doing, but suddenly I had this thought and it's really driven me to start that road now. So basically, you had this conversation with the nurse. Within about 15 minutes, I decided it was time for me to go part time. And that's what I did. I made the decision to set up my own company and to ask my current employer if I could reduce my hours. My business is called uh, EB Consultancy, um, and it's focusing on leadership and management development. And primarily, it's about me working with managers on a one to one basis to try and identify what is it that's currently preventing them getting the best out of their teams and looking at their behaviours through psychometric profiling and coaching. What would you say to somebody who is, who is having a challenge of having a job and people who don't quite understand what needs what, what a, a person with cystic fibrosis needs, how would you say they should approach it? Um, because you are an expert I'm and a determined expert as well. Yeah. I think with all the challenges I've faced, and it's not just within work, it's within the benefits system and everything else that you know, CF people have to struggle with, I would say don't give up, always try and find a way. And I know sometimes it is impossible, but keep trying to be creative and it's about keep talking to them and trying to get people to understand that you are a person, you're not CF, you're a person. And then they're even fearful because I'm really loud and noisy and very challenging. So that makes the fear go to another extreme. <laughs> <laughs> but I say just keep challenging, but do it in a positive way. Don't do it as though the world's against you. Do it as though you're trying to work with the world to get the best for you.